it's deja vu time. Well, almost deja vu. Uh, this isn't really deja vu. We're taking a look at Radial G a second time, except this time we're not going to do it in virtual reality. We're going to do it in stereoscopic 3D. So this start screen is probably familiar to you if you follow my channel at all. And uh, I'm doing this video because, well, I did intend eventually to come back to this title and try it out in stereoscopic 3D, but I'm doing this video specifically because I tried to run the game in stereoscopic 3D and I got it to work pretty well. Um, so I went ahead and reported that on the Steam discussions page for this game. And now it turns out the developers are actually interested in seeing what their game looks like in stereoscopic 3D. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go ahead with it. I mean, this is what this channel is all about. I really don't mind taking the time to show developers their own game running in 3D. It, uh, it especially if it looks cool, I'll be glad to do it. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna feel depressed in the process, you know. Uh, Fortunately, Radial G is scoring high on the uh, 3D mark. Um, and I'm going to show you um, the game running through two different technologies. Right now, we're looking at the game running through NVIDIA 3D Vision. Um, so it's the second one I tried. And I do want to put some camcorder footage, some stereoscopic camcorder footage in this first impressions video, uh, except I can't do it for NVIDIA 3D Vision because I'm outputting in interlaced 3D right now onto my desktop monitor. And it turns out that NVIDIA's interlacing pattern does not match up with my TV at all. So um, now the first thing we're gonna notice with 3D Vision is, whoa, the convergence. But fortunately it responds to the 3D Vision controls and you may adjust your convergence. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm also gonna raise the depth amount here because obviously 3D Vision always goes with a conservative default amount and then you're, it's up to you to set it the way you want. So there we go, I got my depth set up so that the, the panel doesn't go through the menu and I'm gonna go ahead and start the race. All right, well, unfortunately, here's where we encounter our first stereoscopic 3D issue with 3D Vision. And that would be that sort of blue uh, reflection in the windshield. It appears to be rendering monoscopic, so all the cutouts on it are uh, sort of bleeding off their edges. If you're looking at the pipe, you can see that there's a sort of ghost doubling. It looks like crosstalk, but it's not crosstalk. Um, so that's unfortunately an issue that you see right off the bat because it happens to cover the whole screen. Uh, now, I've done a few takes at this video and a few uh, tech runs with this game on 3D Vision at this point, and I can actually safely say that it doesn't really affect the gameplay that badly. Except that it's, it's unfortunate to have the issue, of course, but it does not make the game unplayable in any way. In fact, during these runs, I've had pretty much a lot of fun. This remains a high-speed racing game, sci-fi by all means, and thus it's the genre that you really do want to be playing in stereoscopic 3D, because it is always an awesome experience. It's always... 3D will always augment this genre of gaming. It's always going to work great. And if the stereoscopic 3D can at least provide you a proper illusion of depth, on the, the game world, then you're good. You're, the, your 3D is gonna be uh, fun to use. So aside from that one issue, I gotta say this is Radial G as I know it. Uh, and what I know of Radial G so far is all in virtual reality. I've had tons of fun with the game. In fact, my favorite way to play it would be in virtual reality. But let's be fair here. Officially, I'm still just a stereoscopic 3D gamer because VR gaming is not officially a commercial product yet. Sure, there's Samsung Gear, but that's more like mobile technology than it is gaming technology. So I'm still just a stereoscopic 3D gamer as far as the official record goes. And this is a game I would love to play in stereoscopic 3D. In fact, if say, say I leave my headset at the office one day and I'm here and I wanna play Radial G, I would play it this way. 
All right, back to the Radial G title screen, except this time we're using Tridef Ignition. And uh, by all appearances, things went pretty well because it's working. Uh, however, I had to do a little something special to get this particular game working. Uh, I had to go in my uh, Steam, I had to right click the Radial G title and go to Properties, and then in the Launch Options, I had to write Dash Force dash D3D9 and then I hit OK and I close the window. What does that do? That forces the game to run in DirectX 9. Uh, I was actually having problems launching the game in DirectX 11. It would actually freeze at startup with a black screen using Tridef Ignition. So I had to go ahead and try that and it finally worked. So uh, by putting that little launch command you'll get uh, your 3D working if you're using Tridef Ignition. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it and take a look at uh, what Tridef will do with this game and what kind of uh, 3D we're going to be getting. Alright, so here we are in the uh, waiting room, if you may. Uh, of course, I'm not playing multiplayer, so I'm not waiting for anything, except myself. Um, and uh, let's take a look at a few other technical notes that I need to make when we use Tridef Ignition. Um, First off, this game works great with the generic Tridef Ignition profile, work right off the bat, so there's no need for a custom profile. All you gotta do is you gotta open that Tridef Ignition control panel, you go to performance, and you make sure that Power 3D is turned off. If, if it's not done, go ahead and uh, do it. Uh, one thing that I, I personally like to do is I go in the profile, then I go in the focus, and for the scene I pick fixed one, I put 75 for the near plane and 100 for the far plane. Uh, it's just that I like it that way. I, I'm not a fan of automatic focus in 3D, so I always pick something fixed. And uh, of course, in my 3D settings, I have the usual high depth setting. I went to 65, and to balance everything out, I used 55 for percent in front. So. Um, that's it, right off the bat, I can see a problem right now. And uh, this problem, I've tried to address using the focus layers and I was not able to. Uh, this often happens with Tridef because it handles the depth planes very differently than normal stereoscopic 3D drivers with like 3D vision. Um, what it looks like is happening right now is that the ship is sort of embedded in the ground. Uh, the ship is clipping through the ground as far as the 3D is telling me, as far as my eyes are telling me. Um, so let's go take a look at how that fares on the track and if it's a big problem or not. Alright, on the track! And you can see that that problem is still very visible. Uh, unfortunately, uh, another driver, another issue, except... Here's where I'm gonna get almost like fully positive right off the bat. This issue is almost impossible to notice once you start driving. Once you start playing the game, because you are looking at far, and this is a racing game, uh, you are focusing on the game world, you're not focusing on the ship, ever. Ever, and I mean ever. I've, I've, I've done like five or six races like this to see if it really was a problem, and it is not a problem. It's only a problem before you start, was you, as you look around the ship where you're like, eh, something, something's weird, you know? But uh, once you start racing, you are not paying attention to this problem. This is the last of your worries, believe me. After, ah, after recording this, what I'll do is I'll fire up the game with 3D Vision once more, and if it does happen to resolve the issue with DirectX 9, then I need to let you guys know. So that's why I'll actually go and verify that. So if, uh, if I find out that 3D Vision works as well as Tridef, with DirectX 9, I'll add a clip at the end. If that clip's not there, well, you know what's going on. Uh, 3D Vision has the issue in all circumstances. But for now, it does look like that shader that was having a problem in 3D Vision is still there. I see it, except it's not having problems right now. It's a sort of blue reflection in the glass, and the cutout is actually rendering properly with Tridef, which surprises me. Um, the issue that Tridef has with the game is far less annoying than the issue that 3D Vision has with the game. It's, it's going way better for me here. Well, maybe not the run. I, I, I'm by all means not performing very well right now. But uh, 
You know, that's because I'm just doing the run very casually right now to show you the stereoscopic 3D. Um, so that was Tri-Definition, a much better performance despite the issue that right now is really prominent uh, because we stopped the car, we looked down, and we're like, hey, what the hell is going on? Uh, but still, this is uh, by all means something I would not really uh, freak out over. You know, if I had bought this game expecting to play it in 3D using Tridef, right now this would be satisfactory. If the developers feel like fixing the issues that I've shown, that with 3D Vision and that with Tridef, go ahead, by all means, please do it. I would love uh, nothing more than to know that uh, developers still care about 3D. It's always fun to know. Uh, in fact, I'm really, really happy to hear that the developers actually wanted to see their game running in 3D already off the bat. I'm really happy to do it for you. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to know that developers still care about 3D. And well, you know, I still care a lot about playing in 3D, so I will uh, help out whenever I can. Well, well, well. Uh, is it me or 3D Vision just won this contest hands down? Um, I'm gonna have to revise the video and write some text over it if I notice something during editing, but I am not seeing any issues. So it looks like if you start this game in DirectX 9, it's actually going to work in stereoscopic 3D with 3D vision and... Oh, 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 oh wait, there's something wrong with that blue effect there now in the hall. So that's a new problem now with DirectX 9, we got a different problem going on. And it's probably a good thing that those blue things aren't all over the place because it is a little annoying for the eyes. But so far, it's looking excellent. Here's, here comes some of those blue things. I don't know what's going on. I think the cutout within them may be monoscopic. Something weird's going on. Maybe the bloom is, is mono. Oh, huh, they're going through the pipe. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I guess we, we have some minor issues going on. But again, nothing that halts the gameplay, and uh, I would call this a far better experience than the other one that has the darn shadow problem right in the glass. Um, this is looking quite excitingly good. We should not take away the qualities of tri definition here. It did a pretty good job with the game. In fact, it's fully playable, if you ask me. So uh, with both options, you have something that you can play out of the box, which is pretty cool. Uh, so it's a good thing that I came back and checked it out. When I noticed that I needed DirectX 9 with Tridef, I sort of thought it would be really necessary to come back and do the game fair justice and try it in DirectX 9 uh, with 3D Vision. Something is very well known. It's often um, DirectX 11 shaders that are going to mess with a stereoscopic 3D experience. And uh, the way to address that is just to fall back to DirectX 9 if you have the capacity to do so. If you don't, you have to use complicated shader rewriting tools and shit like that, and it gets really, really, really complicated. Basically, game developers are best at that because they know their shaders. And there we go! My run is done, and that was free of any stereoscopic issue except for those blue arrows. So I would give this an 8 out of 10 right there. Try definitely be getting a 7 out of 10 from me. And of course, with DirectX 11, uh... 3D Vision gets a 6 out of 10, and Tridef does not work. So you gotta run the game in DirectX 9 to get the best results with both technologies. Uh, and uh, they are both very well playable and very enjoyable. So that's it, people. Radial G in stereoscopic 3D. I shall see you soon.